Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. In this lesson, we're gonna talk about tables. So whenever you need to render tabular data, you wanna use the HTML5 table, which is comprised of about a dozen optional HTML5 elements. At a minimum, you probably wanna define a header row, so a row that explains what each of the columns are for, as well as individual data rows that contain cells with the data you want to display to the end user. I'll be referencing the elements described in this document in the specification, the edition for web authors. We're gonna scroll down, take a look at, and hit Control F to find tabular data. So this section, which is 4.9 in my version of the document, uh, we're going to look at many of these elements, including uh, the T body, the T head, the TR, the TD, and the TH, and so on, okay? Uh, it's also important to note that, again, many of the table's elements are completely optional. So you use the parts that are semantically necessary to convey the idea that you're trying to convey in your table of data. Uh, you're trying to avoid parts, uh, adding parts purely for presentational or styling purposes. That's the job of cascading style sheets again, okay? So uh, to really exercise this idea, instead of going through an academic discussion of each of these items, let's go ahead and have some fun. Uh, you'll wanna download the code that's associated with this video, wherever you're currently streaming the video from or wherever you originally downloaded this video to play, there should be a code file. If you open up that .zip file, there should be a folder called Lesson09. Inside of that folder, there is a before, after, and a work folder. So we wanna take the before, and we're gonna copy it, uh, the Lesson09.html file in the before folder, and copy it into the work folder. And so here's where we're gonna do our work. We're gonna open up this up in Notepad. So I'm gonna right-click, open with Notepad, use whatever t uh, technique that is, uh, that is comfortable for you. All right, and so what I wanna do at this point is I'm going to uh, I'm going to create a table of information that displays uh, the recent statistics for my favorite hockey player, Jonathan Taves of the Chicago Blackhawks. Um, and uh, I'm going to display his stats over the last couple of seasons, and I'm going to use a table to display that. So let's just go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm going to start with um, an H2 element just to kind of explain what this is for and give it an, a... Uh, A name here so Jonathan Taves stats and then I'm going to start with the table element and then I'll just go ahead and create the closing table element for the very bottom and then what I want to do is create uh, a header row and to create the header row I'm going to use the T head and then a closing T head and again notice that I am uh, indenting just to show levels for readability sake not because they have any real importance within HTML itself uh, but, you know, the T head element is, represents a row of data that's considered to be the heading row. There's also a T foot, which is similar, but obviously for a footing row for whenever you want to calculate totals or whatever the case might be. But here what we want to do is have a series of, of, um, of T H elements, and each of these represent a cell, uh, a header cell of data considered to have the the heading information, but doesn't contain any data, no numbers or statistics, for example, okay? So here we're gonna have three cells or three columns across the top, one for the season. And again, I can leave off the closing TH, but in my style, I like to include it. Goals. and assists. All right, now below the T head, we're going to create a T body. And this is where we'll, we'll include all of the individual row, rows of information, the statistics themselves. Okay, and so in the T body, we're gonna create a series of rows and you create a row by using the TR or table row element. So opening, closing, TR. And then because we want the first column to indicate the season, I'm gonna go ahead and use a TH for that as well, which again is a table header. 
because it does provide some heading information even though it's in the leftmost column. You see this often in um, when you're working with tables. And then we'll have table data, TDs, for the individual statistics themselves. All right, so for example, this season will be the 2009-2010 season. He had 25 goals and then 43 assists. All right, so at this point, we have enough information to see how it's rendered in a web browser. So let's go ahead and open it up. And you can see uh, it's not beautiful, but that's not important right now. We want to convey intent. And so we have our header row, our header cell that includes the season, and then the individual statistics, 25 and 43 uh, for goals and assists. Okay, so let's just continue on uh, and, uh, and uh, flesh this out completely. I'm going to take the same tact here. In fact, now that I have this structure in place, and I know I'm going to need several of these, I'm just going to copy and paste this a couple of times. That should be sufficient. And we're going to create the... Uh, 2010 to 2011 season and then we'll create the uh, 2011 to 2012 uh, season I think I forgot something here there we go and I guess I don't need this last one all right so here we have the 32 and 44 and then here we have 29 and 28 all right so let's go ahead and see what that looks like all right more of the same great now for example what if i needed to create a row that describes something that he was involved in like the olympics for example and I want it to span the entire uh, the entire row. I can use one cell, and then I'm going to stretch it out using an attribute of the table data called call span. And I'm going to set that equal to three. So whatever data I put in here, so I want to just make a note: 2009 to 2010, also played for Canada at Olympics. All right, now this might change my formatting of my table a little bit, pushing things out a little bit, but you can see I'm able to create one cell that spans the entire width of the table by using this call span. In this case, I want it to stretch three columns. All right, so where did I get columns from? When you create these cells, you're creating essentially columns. All right, so at the very bottom of this, let's, let's add some things up here. And to do that, we're going to add a T foot. And so we'll create a TR and a closing TR. And then we'll use a header to explain that this row is for the totals, OK? Again, much of what I'm doing here is optional. It's just a matter of using the correct markup for what I'm intending to do here. And so, again, the data will be 86 and 115, I happen to know. And so, what would you expect to see here? Well, an additional row. And it looks nothing different, even though it's a footer as opposed to the body. But that's what again, CSS is for to style this up and to make it look great, okay? And I think that's all that I'm gonna do for now. Uh, there, are other, uh, there are other tags that we could use, optional tags for creating call groups uh, and individual columns, and that would allow us to style if you had like, you know, 10, um, uh, 10 
columns uh, represented by your cells here, how many cells you've created. You could create a series of, of call groups and style them differently so that you can see like a light gray or a white background alternatively for each of the cells or each of the call groups, all right? Uh, so one last thing before we conclude this, uh, in this series of lessons, I try to ignore much of the history of HTML. However, in the case of the lowly, much aligned HTML table, it's hard to ignore. You may hear people say, developers should never use tables for layout, and I completely agree with that. However, that does not mean that you should never use tables at all. When web browsers first arrived back in 1992, 93, I guess, somewhere around there, uh, they had limited capabilities for positioning major sections of a website on the screen. Some, somebody realized that you could use tables for this purpose to uh, create basically a, a series of grid cells for your entire web page and then it would make it easy to align things on the web page by turning it into a series of grid cells with rows and columns. However, there are several problems with this approach. From an HTML5 perspective, the most obvious problem is that semantically a table has a precise meaning, a representation of table data like we did here, we created here in this lesson. Using it for layout abuses the purpose of the table. Furthermore, it creates fixed width pages. Now, most of the internet, quite frankly, uses fixed width pages, but that's changing. As we're going to see later in this series, the new goal for web page layout and design should be a responsive design or a fluid or liquid design that allows the web page to adapt correctly depending on whether you're working on a small device or a large screen. The layout of the page will change based on the current dimensions of the web browser uh, where the uh, 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 given the space available for the given device that the, the user is looking at your web page with. Again, this is a topic for much later in this series, but positioning our content in tables would take us back to a thought process prevalent in 1995, uh, not 2012, 2013, and beyond. All right, so if you ever get tempted to use tables for uh, and putting paragraphs inside of them in order to get everything positioned, absolutely stop yourself. Don't do it. Don't go down that road. Uh, at the very minimum, you'll be ostracized by... Uh, um, by small children in the streets, but uh, worst case scenario is that you're not really setting yourself up for the future of web development. Okay, so I think that's all I need to say about that. Uh, tables serve uh, a purpose, use them for that purpose. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Mm -hmm.